Hello everyone and welcome to Rhinac High School. Ian Sachs here alongside Ben Green and we are getting set for the Rhinac Panthers hosting the Keo Unicorns in a big Class B baseball showdown. And Ben, what are you expecting today? Yes, and certainly a big game. Playoff implications for both teams. KO stands at 11 and five, while Rhinec is at nine and seven. Rhinec hoping to get a first home playoff game that they've had in a long time. So it should be a good game. Well, if they want to get a home playoff game, they'll definitely help their cause with a win here against KO. That game coming up right next, it's Rhinec versus KO. Welcome back here to Rhinac High School. Ian Sachs alongside Ben Green, the Rhinac Panthers, and the Keo Unicorns getting set to start things off. We have some lineups for you. Starting it off, Keo batting in the top of the first. It'll be Daisuke Oki, Ryutaro Fukumoto, Yusuke Nakatani, Shutaro Wakayama, Hiromasa Han, Ta Tatsuki Tomishama, Ryuchi Fukuda, Kito Oganuki, and Kotaro Kinisita. It's a lineup for the Unicorns, one through nine. The Panthers' defensive alignment. You have Ligori on the hill. He'll be throwing to Sheldon as Oki steps into the batter's box. The first pitch from Ligori is called low, ball one. Now the Ronek defensive alignment going third to first. Tamuchi, Wanstock, Colangelo, Caparelli. For second pitch in there called strike. One and one now on Oki, the third baseman for Keo. And across the outfield, Parker, Tenor, and Gallagher left to right. The one one fouled off. Down the third baseline. Counts one and two, and a great day for a ball game here in Ryan Neck. Sun is shining and it's warm out as these two teams square off for playoff positioning. Ryan Neck looking to stay afloat above 500. Keo looking to move up well past 500. The one two swung on and fouled back behind the KO dugout on the third base side. So it'll stay at one and two. And Ligori, uh, top pitcher for Reinek, goes into the windup, the one, two, outside, two and two now. Oki working the count from Ligori. The 2-2 two -two is high, right around the chest, neck area, bringing the count full. So we'll have our first payoff pitch of the day. And our first batter. The pitch is drilled to left field, but it's caught by the left fielder. Parker in there to make the grab on the liner for the first out of the day. And that was hit hard, Ian, but nicely done by Parker there. Now digging into the batter's box is Ryutaro Fukumoto, the second baseman for KO. Number 16, batting second in the lineup. That ball is low and outside, so one ball. on Fukumoto. The 1-0 swung on and line to second. Colangelo bobbles it, and Fukumoto will be in there safe at first. So the first base runner of the day is on with an E4. Yeah, it looks like the ball took a tough hop and was difficult to handle for Colangelo, and KO has one on with one out. 
And now we start to get to the heart of the lineup, three, four, five coming up for KO as Nakatani steps in. Center fielder looking to move his teammate over. KO's a team that has a lot of speed. Have to watch out for them on the base paths as the first pitch from Ligori. The breaking ball is outside and the count is now 1-0. Ugori deals, and that's in there for a called strike, but running on the play is Fukumoto, who's in there safe at second. And as you just mentioned, they have a lot of speed, and apparently they are going to be active on the base paths today. And you can even see that with the way that Fukumoto led off of second, led off of first base. He was looking to run all day and waited for the second pitch to take to second base. Pitch outside now from Ligori, one and uh, two and one. And he has to be careful now, Ligori, because a base hit would drive, likely drive in the runner from second. That one fouled back, bring the count even at two and two. Fukumoto stays put at second on the foul ball. Ligori set to deal. The 2-2 is swung on, grounded to third. Tamuchi making the grab to, across the diamond. Throw is in there. Got him out, but advance, uh, staying at second is Fukumoto. And a, a great job by Tamuchi there. He made sure to look the runner back and then put enough mustard on the throw across the diamond to get the runner. You know, placement is everything in baseball when you look at it because that ball's grounded to second. Fukumoto's often running to third. Exactly, and that's what makes a good third baseman. They need to be aware of the situation and have a big arm. Wakayama, the cleanup hitter, is up now, sees the first pitch sail outside. Count 1 0 now. Completely different setup now. Runner on, runner on second, and that one sails in there, out in for a strike. One and one now, and two outs. So the play, the easiest, the play is the easiest out. So Reinek has a little bit of less of a worry to deal with here. Well, the only force out would be the play at first, as that one is swung on and. Back to right field, and the catch made by Gallagher to end the inning. So KO gets one on, on an error, but leaves him stranded at second. Ronak Panthers getting their first dibs at batting right after this. Welcome back to LMC Varsity, Varsity Sports. Ronak and Keo, bottom of the first inning. Panthers looking to get their first crack at scoring today. Take a look at the Rynek lineup. It's Jack Sheldon leading off, then Zach Tenner, Chris Colangelo, Ben Weinstock, Frank Caparelli, Kevin Tamucci, Christian Cefaloni, Corey Parker, and Peter Gallagher rounding it out for the hometown Panthers. On the hill for the KO Unicorns is Hiromasa Han. He'll be tossing to Kinoshita behind the plate. The first pitch is in the dirt, low ball one for Sheldon. Keo's defensive alignment, third to first. Oki, Wakayama, Fukumoto, and Tomishima. Outfield left to right, Nakabachi, Nakatani, and Oganuki. The 1-0 from Han is in there for a called strike one, so one and one goes the count on Sheldon. Ronex catcher, number two, batting number one. And Keo was active with the bat in the upper half of the inning. Let's see if Ryan Eck can can do the same. That ball outside for a two and one count now.
even KO's last out, as you mentioned, was a, a deep fly out to right. That ball high sails where the head of Sheldon would have been if he hadn't ducked. Looks like it hit the ump there, Ian. He's walking it off. And the, the base umpire is coming to check on him, making sure everything's all right. He looks pretty good. As Kinoshita checks with Han, make sure they're on the same page. Count three and one. Not exactly how you want to start the game with three of her first four pitches being outside of the strike zone. Even the last one there, a little wild from Han, but he looks to be settled down a little bit. Yeah, you want, it's important for a pitcher to start the game on the right track and most importantly throwing strikes and getting in their comfort zone. There's one right there to even the, to make it a full count. Han knew Sheldon would be looking for the walk. The free pass to Baith, why not throw it right down Broad Street? And now Sheldon's got to protect the plate as the count is full. Han deals the payoff pitch, swung on and fouled back. We'll have another payoff pitch. Like we stated in the opening, Ryan Neck battling for playoff position. This is a crucial game in the standings as KO is two games ahead of them in section B. Every game is important, but especially when you start matching up with other playoff teams, final mm. week or two of the season, it's always important. The payoff pitch is lined into center and Sheldon is on with a base hit, the first hit of the game for either team. And that was a good piece of hitting. He went right with the pitch, right back up the middle and it bounced in front of the center fielder, Nakatani. Beautiful hit up the middle, Sheldon's on, and now Tenor will have an opportunity to advance his teammate, Zach Tenor, number five, the center fielder, stepping into the batter's box. Han gets set and deals. Sails in there for strike one. Tomi Shima, the first baseman, is holding Sheldon on at first. And he certainly has Han's attention. The 0-1 from Han. In there for a cold strike, but look, Sheldon going on the base paths and it looked like that ball was batted down the throw over to second and Sheldon safely in there. Either that or Ryan Neck feels like they should be a lot more aggressive on the base pass because that ball ended up rolling to the second baseman. We'll see if that factors into their attack to the base paths, to figuring that Kinoshida might not have a, a, that good of an arm. You would think it would. So the 0-2 to Tenor, and Han takes a second off the rubber. Now he recollects himself, gets back on there. As we were saying in the last inning, runner on second completely different from runner on first. Han delivers, and uh, the high heat swung on and missed by Zach Tenor goes down swinging. Yeah, he chased the fastball up high there, and um, Definitely out of the zone, but he looked like he could want to get a good swing on it. One down now, and Chris Colangelo, the big number three hitter for the Panthers, gets set. Time is called by the home plate umpire. Not quite sure why, but Nonetheless, we will take a quick timeout. Now Han gets set to deal again. Han checks Sheldon at second. Now goes to the plate. That ball's well outside. And oftentimes you'll see a player make a, an error in the field and feel a little bit of an extra um, want to atone for it at the plate. See if Colangelo can capitalize on that. Ben, refer ben, you're referencing there the, the error at second that Colangelo made going at Sheldon, and he's nailed out at third. third. 
costly there. Ronek trying to get a little too aggressive and Sheldon gunned down by Kinoshita at third base. Yeah, stealing third is a lot different than stealing second and Kinoshita nailed him. A much shorter throw for Kinoshita and good job by Oki getting the tag down on Sheldon. Now two away, nobody on base, completely different scenario. Colangelo awaits the pitch from Han. That one in there first, a strike. Han now can only focus on Colangelo ahead of him, not have to worry about Sheldon on the base paths. As that ball is high. Looks like Han is trying to throw a breaking ball occasionally when he's ahead in the count. And why not? We saw that he could throw the high heat, mix up the pitches yeah. a little bit, and try to fool Colangelo. Han deals at ball in the dirt low, and Colangelo draws the first walk of the game. So just as Ronek lost the base runner, they get one right back. Yeah, and um, Ben Weinstock, the shortstop, will come to the plate now looking to advance Chris Colangelo. The tall, lanky number four hitter. Clean up, Ben Weinstock. Digs in, gets set number seven. Han looks for the signs, now gets set and deals. Trickled in the corner, just catching the outside corner there, Han, for the first strike on Weinstock. Now Han looks to looks back to first. The throw over not in time. Colangelo safely in there. And Han now refocuses on Weinstock at the plate. It's a one count. Again, no score, bottom of the first. The pitch is inside bringing the count even at one apiece. KO left one stranded in the top of the first. Ronak got a runner to second, but he was gunned down trying to steal third. That was Sheldon. Now this pitch is a strike just inside corner on Weinstock, taking second, Colangelo. So another runner in scoring position with two outs. I'm sure Han would like to focus on the batter as two are away. Kinoshita not even throwing down to second base, figuring too risky if the throw got away as Colangelo got a good jump on that one. Time call, it's Colangelo at second, Wanstock at the plate. One, two count on Wanstock. Han, the KO starter looking to get out of a jam with another runner on second base again. Han gets set, deals. That one cut on and fouled back, so we'll do the one-two all over again. One strike and Han is out of this inning. I'm sure his coach is telling him to bear down and throw it in there. Don't focus on the runners. The, the defense, that's what the defense behind you is for. Just focus on throwing it to the plate as Han gets set, does that. The one, two, just a tad outside, bringing the count even at two and two. Han threw a pitch earlier in this at bat that was nearly at the same plate, just trickled the corner, this one just on the other side of that corner. And that ball fouled back now. It will go out of play and land on top of the nice batting cage to our left. So the count will stay two and two. And Wanstock will get another opportunity with two strikes on him. 
Panthers doing a good job of wearing Han out here in the first inning already. Han deals, cut on, and that one lined shallow left center field, and it's down in there. Running around to home is Colangelo. He'll be safe, and the first run of the game belongs to the Roddick Panthers. Yeah, good job there by Weinstock of protecting the plate, going with the pitch to center, and a run scores. Reinach is up 1-0. And a gutsy move there by the Reinach coaching staff to send Colangelo home. Right as Colangelo was getting set to round third, Nakabachi was coming up with it and, and coming in with his momentum, getting set to throw in, in to try to get Colangelo at home. But the coaches with enough faith in Colangelo to get home safe. Caparelli steps into the batter's box. The first baseman, the first lefty we're seeing in today's game. Han deals cut on a big swing there by Caparelli. He, he wanted that one and more. Took a big cut at that. Han gets set to deal and that one just fouled off the bat of Caparelli. So now two strikes on the big lefty first baseman for Ron Eck. Han just one strike away of getting out of this inning with just one run score of damage. That ball fouled back and it'll go over the KO dugout and will stay with two strikes in this at bat. Not much to change, two strikes and a foul ball. No, but I think Reinach has to be feeling good about their first time up here as they're wearing down Han. They got to run across the board. And that's exactly what you want to do in the first inning. You want to make a pitcher work. And not only are they making him work by throwing so many pitches with so many runners on base, constantly having someone on base, Han is very conscious of the runners. And that ball drilled down the line in right field. That's extra bases all written all over it as Caparelli will stand up double and racing home is Weinstock all the way from first and it's 2-0 Ron Eck. 2-0, absolutely ripped there by the lefty. Pulled it to right field and he's at second with a stand up double and a 2-0 lead. That's exactly what Ron Eck needed. They have had two runners on second base, but just one run to show for it already. And Caparelli showing that power, drilling that one down the right field line. And Ian, both of their runs, the RBI by Weinstock and Caparelli, both runners have had two strikes on them. Tamuchi flies that one to left field over the head of Nakabachi. Racing home will be Caparelli, and Tamuchi's in there with a double of his own. It's a hit parade for Ryan Eck. Three straight runs have scored, and they're out to an early 3-0 lead here. And it, it, it looked like it would go, it, it, it could go a little south for Ryan Eck when you had the, the routine ground ball to second, and coming up a little short with it, um, was Colangelo, but really he started it off with the walk and ever since then the Panthers have been reeling in the runs. They say hitting is contagious, Ian. Three straight big, big hits for Reinach. Cephaloni in the batter's box now. The designated hitter, Christian Cephaloni. He'll look to continue this streak and make it maybe even a four or five spot here in the first inning. Han looks to now have a little damage control here as we're only in the first inning. Rodak already with three runs, that ball swung on and Wakayama, the cross diamond throw gets. Cephaloni just by a half of a step, the coaches is showing Cephaloni just that much. Inches was the difference there between safe and out. But I think Ron Eck will take that first inning. Three runs on three hits 
on four hits, excuse me, for the Panthers. And they have an early 3-0 lead. One inning in the books here at Ronak High School. Welcome back here to LMC Varsity Sports. A pretty good first inning for the Ronak Panthers. Three runs on the board on four hits, one left on base. And we're here in the top of this second inning. Definitely an active inning for the Panthers. They got three runs across the board and their hits, their hits traveled well. Will Gorey on the mound looking to protect this lead against the other pitcher that is Han. The first pitch is low. That one is low and outside as well. So it's quickly a 2-0 count for Han who wouldn't mind helping his own cause here as he gave up those three runs to the Panthers. The 2-0 in there, clip in the corner for a called strike on Han, 2-1. First inning, one error, no hits, one left on base for KO. That ball cut on and fouled back, bringing the count even at 2-2. Two But even though Kayo only only got the the one base runner, they did have a few good hard hits. They had the one liner to left field, the fly out to right field, and they can certainly put the stick on the ball as Han does just that. That one is caught by Gallagher and right. Gallagher's having himself a pretty yeah. busy day. Two of the four outs going his way so far. Yeah, he's done a nice steady job in right field catching two fly balls. And now coming to the plate is Tatsuki Tomishima, the first baseman for KO. Tomishima getting his first look at Ligori right here. The first pitch outside for a ball. Lugori gets set to deal the big righty in the dirt. So a 2 0 count. Jay, last at bat, Han saw a 2 0 count and then battled back. Lugori battled back, got it. Two strikes on him and then the fly out. So he's been in this position before. Lugori gets set to deliver that one right down Broad Street for Tomishima, who had the take sign, definitely. Two and one count now, Ligori set and right back, going from 2-0 to 2-2. Two -two. Perfectly on cue, Ian, he battles back and now the count is all evened up. Now if Tomishima really wants to follow Han, he'll fly out to right field. <laughs> let, let, let's see if this analogy continues as Ligori deals. Okay, down the Close. first base line, that one is safe. It bounced over the bag. The grab and a beautiful play by Caparelli to stay with the play and getting it over to Ligori for the force out. Great concentration. Even after the ball bounced off his glove, he was able to regain himself and throw the ball over to Ligori for the out. Caparelli really showing his, his dedication there to stay with the ball as he basically had to barehand it after it bounced out of his glove and then the little flip over to Ligori. Designated hitter Fukuda now into the batter's box. That ball is outside. So again, now all three batters so far this inning, first pitch is a ball. That one clip in the corner for Ligori, so I was about to say, does the analogy hold up? But of first two pitches being balls, but well, there goes my theory. I think I was about to start calling you the prophet. <laughs> that one cut on Weinstock with the thro high throw over and getting safe on base will be Fukuda. And he'll take second too on the overthrow, was out of bounds. So it looked like it'd be a one, two, three inning for the Panthers. And then Wanstock got a little generous on the air mail. And now a runner is in scoring position. Let's see if KO can capitalize. And like you were saying earlier, Ian, despite the three nothing score, 
Kale has put, in the, put the bat on the ball and put the ball in play almost every hitter. That's true. No strikeouts so far for Lagori. First pitch in to Oganuki, a called strike. Last inning, though, Ko did get a runner on second mm -hmm. as Fukumoto got to second on a stolen base and then was left stranded there. That one cut on and fouled off. So quickly now, the count now 0-2 on Oganuki. Lagoria will look to end this inning the same way that last one ended, stranding a runner on second who reached on an error. That one in there for a cold strike. Three, dial him up. Oganuki is struck out. So just a nut, one more error in the books and one left stranded for KO. It's 3-0, Rynek, middle of the second. Welcome back to OMC Varsity Sports. Bottom of the second, Rynek with a 3-0 lead over KO. Parker leading things off the eight hitter and the Panthers light up to the first pitch in there for a called strike one. Reinek holds a 3-0 lead over KO in the bottom of the second. The pitch is in and fouled off back by Parker. Corey Parker, the left fielder for this Reinek team. Batting eight in the lineup today. It's eight nine one do up, Parker, Gallagher, and Sheldon. The 0-2 from Han. High, sails well above the head of Corey Parker, who's, well, not that, not quite that tall, so. Pretty easy to have the pitch go above his head. That one is behind him. I don't know where Han was going with that one. Parker had to lean forward to get out of the way. So a 2-2 count now, as Parker, with a good eye, Good reflexes. Outside and low, three and two now is the count. So Parker doing a good job working the count full from 0-2 to 3-2. Han delivers that one, cut on, right back to Han, the dribbler, and he'll just flip it over to Tomishima for the put out. Always nice to see a pitcher field his position correctly, Ian. Something that coaches definitely value. Although that ball wasn't difficult to handle, Han handled it well. And that'll bring up Peter Gallagher, the right fielder, the non-hitter in this Rynak lineup. And then we're right back to the top of the order that caused so much havoc in the first in there for a cold strike one on Gallagher. Han would like nothing more than a quick one, two, three inning here after laboring through the first inning, that ball sailing high. But Han had to work his way through seven batters just to get out of that inning. Saw three runs put up on the scoreboard which is a big credit to Reinek's plate discipline and making Han throw pitches that are in the strike zone that they can put a bat on. Mentioned the plate dis discipline. Gallagher watches that one sail high. So a two and one count now coming up. Han deals that one high yet again. Now three and one. Han struggling a little bit with his control here today. He is, and you wonder, you know, the game is within reach. It's 3-0. What uh, the KO coaches are thinking right now as Han deals to Nair. Hit back to the first baseman who will take it himself to the bag and two down for Ryan Eck. Tomishima doing a good job showing his range there. Running in on the grass and turning right back around to cover the base at, at first. Fukumoto was racing over, as was Han, to assist Tomishima. And Tomishima said, no worries, I got it, I'll take it myself. For the unassisted put out. 
Back to the top of the lineup for Ryneck. Sheldon watches that first pitch in the dirt. Sheldon got the first hit of the game, drilled it nicely right up the middle. So he looks to do that yet again. Pitch number two, ball number two. 2-0 two count now on Sheldon. Hahn looking to get out of this inning. One, two, three. Gets Reineck. set. Oh. Gets set. Deals and that pitch is high. Three and zero oh now. Reineck started a rally with two outs last inning in their big inning. Let's see if that's something Han can avoid this time around. Be awfully difficult with a three zero -oh count. Gallagher has the take sign. Or, excuse me, Sheldon has the take sign, and that pitch right down the middle of the plate as it is now three and one. But it's a, it'll be a walk for Sheldon. Second walk of the day issued by Han. And you mentioned it, Ben, last inning, two out and a walk for Ryneck. Next three batters all got hits, all got RBIs, and three runs on the board for the Panthers. And it'll be interesting to see if um, Ryneck sends Sheldon here to get him in scoring position. Almost identical to last inning. Uh, very conscious of the base runner Sheldon at first, throwing over before he even turns his attention to Tenor at first, at the plate. Now Honnell gets said deal, and that one is just at the knees of Tenor for a called strike. Han looking to not have another two out rally happen here. He deals the 0 1. That one in there for a called strike, and the Steal attempt in there, safe for Sheldon. Just like last inning, Sheldon again with a stolen base. Runner in scoring position, two outs. But just one more strike. Does Han need to get out of this inning with a goose egg for the Panthers? Han uh, enters the wind up and sends that one. It'll land foul down the third base line. So now back to 0 2. Still 0 2. Not back to it. Still 0 2. And Han can be flexible here with his pitches. He's head in the count. And you know that he wants to get out of this with unscathed, with no runs. That would be very big as the game progresses. Han deals. Caught on and missed by Tenor. Two strikeouts now for Han and both dialed up against Tenor. No, no runs, no hits, one stranded, and we are through two innings here at Raw Neck. It's 3-0 Panthers. Ben Green here alongside Ian Sachs as we enter the top of the third inning at Ryaneck High School. The Panthers lead KO 3-0. Connor LaGlory on the hill as he enters his third inning of work. First pitch in there for a strike to the catcher, Kotero Kinoshita. Second pitch catches the outside corner and he's ahead 0-2. A good job there by Ligori coming out aggressive. Why not? Because he has a 3-0 lead. Just throw strikes and see what happens. Exactly. It's definitely better pitching with a lead. And there down goes Kinoshita looking on the fastball. And one out for Ryan Neck. Back-to-back -back K's now spanning two innings. But back-to-back -back K's for Ligori, both catching the unicorn sleeping. So one down, Dice K. Oki, the third baseman, will come to the plate. Last time up, Oki lined one to left field. 
Good job coming on and catching it by Parker. The first pitch is inside and high for a ball. 1-0. and oh. Ligori looks in. And the pitch is fouled up high down the first baseline. Caparelli giving chase, but it's out of play. Coming almost near us. I yeah. I was sad I left my glove at home today. <laughs> Would have just run up there, but it was also on top of the batting cage, and I wasn't about to go scaling up the batting cage for the ball. So ahead in the count, one and two, the pitch is hit and grounded to second base. Gallagher throws over to first, and the runner is out. So two down, a nice play by the second baseman. No, I'm sorry, Chris Colangelo, excuse me. And two are put away here in the top of the third. Colangelo st stuck with that one, and uh, uh, an efficient inning so far for Ligori. Just six pitches, two outs. Try to keep that going. And the pitches hit the shortstop. The ball is thrown to first, and the runner is out. That was Ryoto. <laughs> Ryotaro Fukumoto, and that'll end the top of the third. Reinek ahead 3-0 here on LMC TV. Han still on the hill for KO as we enter the bottom of the third. Reinek Panthers up 3-0 on the Unicorns. And Ian, we've had a quick game so far. And Pace hasn't been too bad. About 45, 50 minutes in, two innings done. Colangelo starting things off for the Panthers and well ahead of that one. It'll be Colangelo followed by Ben Weinstock and then Frank Caparelli, the first baseman. Han looks in and the ball is hit the left field, but the play is made by Nagabachi. That ball was lined hard and the left fielder had to adjust to it and make the catch, one down. Just had to run in a few steps and it was right in the right in not right in his uh, mitt and uh, beautiful grab there for the first out. But this is the heart of the order that got those hits, that got those three runs for Ryan X. So an important part of the game here is Wanstock drove in the first run, and the shortstop takes ball one. Low. Han looks in. The pitch is high for ball two. Weinstock realizing that there's no chance I'm going to swing at that one. Just drop the bat. And 2-0, hitters count. Let's see if he has the green light. The pitch is in, and he does. High in the air to left field, and Nagabachi makes the play despite the sunlight. Yeah, I am very much in favor of having hitters swing on 2-0, 3-0 counts. You know you're gonna get a strike. Why have them waste such a good pitch? I'm with you there as Frank Caparelli will step to the plate. The lefty drove in one run on a liner to right field, his last at bat. Beautiful shot down the right field line, just kept rolling and rolling all the way to the fence. First pitch in there for a strike as Han is ahead 0 oh, and 1. Han looking to make some quick work like he did last inning. That ball has hit a chopper to the second baseman. The play is made and that'll end the inning. No runs scored for Ryan Neck as we enter the top of the fourth here on LMC TV. We're back here on LMC TV in the top of the fourth inning. Leading off for the KO Unicorns is Yasuki Nakatani. The first pitch is in there for a strike as Connor Ligori works through the middle of the lineup. Both Teams going one, two, three in the third inning, so pitcher starting to settle down a little here. Second pitch is low for a ball. Count is even at one and one. And I think you're right there, Ian. Both pitchers have settled into a zone, and now they're starting to work through the lineups the way they want to. 
Last time up, Nakatani grounded out to third. The 1-1 is fouled back behind first base into a residential area. Landed on a nice patio right behind the first base line. That'll be nice. Yeah, let's have some uh, let's have some people over for a barbecue. Oh, here's a baseball. And that pitch is lined at the left field and will be caught and recorded for the first out of the inning by the left fielder Parker. Parker doing a good job reeling that one in on the run. Not an easy catch there. Coming into the sun, in to catch the ball, and Parker made the nice grab. Shutero Wakiyama is at the plate now. The shortstop is 0 for 1 on the day. Had a nice hard hit to right field though. So he could definitely put a good bat on the ball. First pitch in there for a strike. Gory looks in for the sign, and he deals. Low for a ball, one on one. Gory is now retired five straight KO unicorns, and if you date back to the first inning, it would be ball is hit hard on the ground, shortstop right through Weinstock's legs, and Wakayama will reach safely and go to second base as the ball was thrown over the head of the first baseman. Do you see what happened there, Ian? I did not, but they're awarding him third base. Wakayama going all the way from first to third on a Bill Buckner type play. Yes, that is something. The, the, it looks like the, the second base was awarded to him because the ball was thrown out of, out of play. Not quite sure why he was awarded the first base to begin with, but nonetheless, an interesting juncture here in, in this game. Quite a turn of events. Looked like Ligori would be getting out of this inning. One, two, three, and all of a sudden he's got a runner on third now. With the pitcher Hiromasa Han at the plate looking to help his own cause. Fouls that one back. Aggressive on the first pitch, but not with the great cut and fouling it off behind the plate. And I think if KO scores one across here, that's that's big for their morale and they can feel like they're back in this ball game. It's only three nothing. Ligori deals low for a ball. Even evening the count at one. And you have to wonder if his psyche is a little out of whack now with the runner on third. The pitch is low again for a ball. Count is two and one to Han. Han flew out to right when he let off the second two innings ago. Low again, three and one now to Han, and you wonder if um, Ligori will put, put his counterpart on first and focus on the next batter. And that's dangerous then because Han would likely move up to second on catcher indifference. The pitch is hit to shortstop, fielded, and the throw is good to first and that'll end the inning. Oh no, that is two outs, excuse me. Second um. out of the inning, so with that, the runner Wakayama races home to first. So one out, but one run nonetheless, and it'll be 3 1 now. 3 1, KO is cut into the lead. Let's see if they can expand on that as Tatsuki Tomashima comes to the dish. The pitch is high and outside, 1-0. and oh. And that's a big run for KO to get across the board in the fourth inning to see if they can mount a comeback. Second pitch is low and away, 2-0. and oh. But I'd say maybe even a bigger play for Ryan Eck because, fine, you sacrifice the, the one run, 
Make it two out now, no runners on base for Ligori to worry about. All he has to do is focus on Tomishima, get him out, get out of the inning. One run, not the end of the world when you're up 3-1. You, you were up 3-0, now up 3-1. I completely agree, and now as he works his way in the fourth inning, you have to think that they're feeling more and more comfortable with their lead. And there's a walk to Tomashima, a runner on for KO, as the DH Fukuda will come to the plate. A four-pitch walk Ligori issued to Tomishima, and not exactly what you want to see, especially after a run just came across. Figure, okay, get Tomishima all set. But now Fukuda comes up, tying run at the plate. I know we're only in the fourth inning, not so much uh, of an issue, but you know what? This, uh, this could become quite interesting. That it could, as the first pitch is in there for a strike, 0-1 to the DH. Fukuda reached out an error in the second. The runner goes, the throw is in time, and they got him, rifled by Jack Sheldon to catch the runner stealing, and that'll end the inning, and what a way to end the inning. A great put out by the catcher as we head into the bottom of the fourth. One run comes across, but Reinach leads three to one. Back here on LMC TV, in the bottom of the fourth inning, the Reinach Panthers lead the KO Unicorns three to one. A new pitcher in the game for KO, number 16, Ryutaro Fukumoto. And he was playing second base prior to that. And the new second baseman is Taisi Niwa, number four. And the pitch is in there for a strike. Fukumoto has a windup strikingly similar to Daisuke Matsuzaka. That it is, the slow wind up and then the hold in the middle. That pitch is hit high in the air to the shortstop, Wakayama. He backs up and the play is made, one down. Battling the sun a little bit and the little, the little bump just outside the infield on the shallow right, uh, left field grass. But a, a nice grab there. Fukumoto will now face number nine. Christian Cephaloni. Designated hitter, 0 for 1 with a ground out to short. First pitch high for a ball. Bottom third of the Ronak order here. That one in there for a strike, one and one. An interesting decision by KO to go with a relief pitcher in the bottom of the fourth. Do you like the, the thinking there by the Unicorns? I question it a little bit because Han was doing very well. Outside of that first inning, Han gave up one walk. He was starting to settle down but I guess they felt his pitch count might be a little bit too high as Fukumoto is ahead in the count one and two. Did have to work his way through mm -hmm. a, a lot of at-bats and long at-bats, but really, really started to deal. Went one, two, three in the third. Just gave up the one walk in the second. The first, of course, was a struggle for him. Not gonna lie about that, but totally settling down in the second and third. The pitch is in, and just low for a ball, as Fukumoto wanted that one. That's about as close as you can get to the strike zone without being in the strike zone. Fukumoto winds up, and that one is in there for a strike right down the middle but you can understand why the hitter did not swing as it was very close to the last pitch he had thrown. But there's a strikeout for Ryotaro Fukumoto, his that, first of the day. That one about as close as to being 
outside of the strike zone as you can be without being outside of the strike zone. Now, Parker in there. Corey Parker takes the first pitch for a strike. 0 for 1 on the day, grounded right back to the pitcher. First time up in the second. That ball is in there for a strike. 0 and 2, Parker falls behind. Parker does know how to work the count. Worked it all the way full in the second. 3-1, Reineck leads in the bottom of the fourth and down goes Parker swinging and that'll end the inning. No run score. KO down by two runs as we enter the top of the fifth inning here on LMC TV. Welcome back to LMC Varsity Sports Ian Sachs alongside Ben Green. Top of the fifth inning, Reineck with a 3-1 lead over the KO Unicorns. First pitch cut on and fouled back. That's Fukuda at the plate. Now Fukuda was the last batter up in the last inning, but of course Tomishima got caught stealing and now he's up here again. That ball drilled down up the middle and he'll be in there safe. A little unorthodox way of getting to first base. He thought he would have to slide and Fukuda realized right at the last second that there was no throw over to first base, so he could just walk in there and kind of just graze the bag with his hand. Not something you see every day, but nonetheless, he's safe at first. And Weinstock was upset with himself in shortstop. He felt like he should have got his glove down and had an opportunity at a throw. Oganuki now in the batter's box. Ligori will face him. Ball's high, a little bit of a pitch out, expecting Fukuda to run. Oganuki showing Bunty. You never know with this feisty Keo team that I, I've even seen their coach try a su try suicide squeezes. They'll uh, try any way to get a run across. That Bunt is fouled off, but high. And if you noticed, Sheldon making every last ditch effort to try to grab that because uh, that'd be a foul out then and. Uh, and very much changed the, the nature of the inning. And he has room to work with as there's a large backstop here at Ryan Eck. A lot of room to work with for the catcher. Ligori deals the 1-1. One, one. That one, Bunt laid down. Ligori fields it but bobbles it and can't do anything with it. Nobody covering third at first, but coming in to make sure someone was there was Parker. The Bunt in there safely, so it'll be runners on first and second now. And and like you said, Ian, KO, they're willing to do whatever they can to get runners on base. And sometimes when you think you're gonna lay down a sacrifice bunt, it pays off. Two balls that could have been recorded as outs now result as two base runners for KO. Now, the tying run is on. The go-ahead run steps to the plate. That's Kinoshita, the number nine hitter in the unicorn lineup. And they show Bunt again. Kinoshita gets it down the third base line, but it trickles foul. And we will see if they do that again. Risky play, but you know what? It's worth it. Try to get second and third one out. That's quite a good situation, a sacrifice fly and a base hit, get both of them in. And they're down two runs. This game is very capable of being tied up with one swing of the bat. This could be quite interesting as Kinoshita gets the bunt down, Ligori fields it, gets it over to first for the sacrifice. So now it is the situation we were talking about, second and third, one out. top of the order, so very capable that Keo could muster something together here as Oki gets set in the batter's box. And this is the first real trouble that Ligori has faced in, in, in a little bit since the first inning. Let's see how he responds. 
Well, Keogh did get the one run yeah. last inning, but that was a, a bit of an unorthodox way to push the run across. Yeah. First pitch fouled back behind the plate, 0-1. And after they scored that run, he settled down and refocused and took care of business. This is a situation that he has not been in yet. Last inning, the error, and then because of that, got the runner went from first to third without anything happening, and then the ground out brought him home. Pitch there, called strike bring the count to 0 and 2 and this would be a big big strikeout if Ligori could get this one and they, and Keo has their leadoff hitter at the plate this is where they want to be right now second and third with Daisuke Oki at the plate that pitch from Ligori just just missing Tough to the lay strike off that. zone Ligori deals that one nearly clipping the corner, but just a hair outside. Bringing the count now even at two and two, and Flugori just missing the strike zone on each of the last two, doing a good job trying to get Oki to chase, but unsuccessful. That pitch fouled off, so we'll redo the 2-2. The and it looks like he reared back there and put something extra on it as that ball was thrown in faster than what I've seen him throw today so far. Looks like Ligori getting a little anxious with runners on second and third. The 2-2, cut on and missed. A big strikeout for the Rhinag righty. Huge strikeout there for Ligori, showing that he can compete in a pressure situation. Now that'll bring up Fukumoto. Fukumoto, 0 for 2 technically on the day, did reach in the first on an error. At ball low, so 1 and 0 goes the count. Again, reset that's Fukuda at third, Oganuki at second. Two out here in the top of the fifth. 3-1 Rynak, Ligori deals, strike, sails in there, and it is a 1-1 count now on Fukumoto, the Kyo second baseman, or now pitcher, that ball cut on, fouled back down the first baseline, out of play, lands in the trees. In case anyone's keeping score at home, that one landed in the trees. Ligori deals, cut on, and shallow pop-up, and Caparelli trickles into foul territory to make the grab. So no runs, one hit for the Unicorns, two stranded, and we'll head to the bottom of the fifth with a score of 3-1 Rynak. Welcome back to OMC Varsity Sports. Bottom of the fifth, Rynak with a 3-1 lead. Looking to add to it here, it's Gallagher, Sheldon, and Tenor do up. First pitch in there for a called strike. And Fukumoto has worked well in his one inning of work. Um, not a lot of pitches. Let's see if he can continue that in inning number two. Strike two in there, called on Gallagher. Gallagher 0 for 1 today with a called, with a ground out to first. This is made the 0-2 from Fukumoto. Is in the dirt, so we'll have a 1-2 coming up. KO couldn't capitalize in la uh, their last at bat with runners on second and third. They're going to have to fight back in the top half of the next inning. Big spot there for KO and for Ryan Neck as that pitch outside, bringing the count even at two and two. KO had two chances to get a base hit, tie the game 
potentially, but unable to push those two runs across. And now Ronak still nursing a 3-1 lead. That ball on the dirt. Gallagher went from down 0-2 in the count, working it all the way back to full, and we'll have a payoff pitch now. Gallagher all set, wait, awaits the payoff pitch from Fukumoto. That one cut on to the left side and babbled a little miscommunication there from Oki and Waki, Wakayuma as they didn't know who was going to take it and as a result, Gallagher's in there safe. It was hit in that sweet spot right between short and third where a lot of times it's difficult to communicate who will take it and good hustle by the runner to get to first base. You know what? Ryan Eck will take it because now they have a runner on and top of the order due up. Sheldon comes over from talking with coach there over on the third base line. And he gets set, the catcher. One for one today. Got on base both times. Two stolen bases already for Sheldon, who sees a first pitch called a strike. Fukumoto looks over to Gallagher at first, now deals. That pitch sails outside. Makes the count one and one. Fukumoto gets set. Fukumoto's done a good job so far in relief. That ball cut on and it sailing under it will be Nakatani as he makes the grab in center, one away. Coming to the plate now is Zach Tenner, the center fielder. Tenner's got two strikeouts to his name today, both caught on swinging, swinging. so uh, he'll be looking to get a little bit of a better result in this at bat. Maybe he's going for the golden sombrero. The golden sombrero. I think the uh, Cinco de Mayo was last week. Lays down a bunt, that one falls foul down the third baseline. Do uh, explain the reference with the golden sombrero. The golden sombrero I learned a few weeks ago on late night with SVP, Scott Van Pelt, shout out to SVP, that it is four strikeouts in a game by the batter. You do not want that as Tenor lays down the bunt and Fukumoto not sure what to do with it. And it backfires on the Panthers. Fukumoto holding on to the ball, decides, you know what? Why not go to third as, as Gallagher tried to take the extra base and he gets him out. And I couldn't tell whether the third base coach signaled Gallagher to take the extra base or if he did it on his own, but now they have a runner on first with two down, much different than first and second. It's absolutely true. It, it looked like it was a, a Keo mistake would lead to a, a good thing for Ryan Eck, but the Keo mistake led to a good thing for Keo. Not something you like to see if you're in the dugout for Ryan Eck. Looking to expand on their 3-1 lead and put this game in a more safe position for them. Fukumoto throws back to first, but now he'll look at Colangelo in the batter's box, the number three hitter, 0 for 1 today, as he drills that one to left field. And you can't help but think, Ian, what could have been on hits like that following a mistake like what we just saw. What could have been is another run could have been in for the Panthers, or if not another run, then at least base is loaded now, which would be quite a sweet scenario. Base is loaded just one out as opposed to first and second with two away. Ben Weinstock enters the batter's box. 
Weinstock with one RBI to his name so far today. Wouldn't mind adding another one in this big spot. Provided an insurance run for the Panthers and tried to help them in their case to get to double digit wins. A win today would give Ronak their 10th win of the season. The 0, the 1 0 is in there for a strike, bringing the count to 1 and 1 now. Fukumoto in a little bit of a jam here, but of course can get out of it with getting it out right here and not allowing the Panthers to push a run across. That ball's in there for a strike as he needs one more to end the inning. And you'd hope, we've seen this happen today, that the pitcher, Fukumoto, will focus solely on the batter and recording this out to get out of the jam. That's exactly how to do it. The, the only run that, the only Ronag Panther that matters to him right now should be at the plate of that one cut on and drilled to Wakayama who does the nice little flip over to Niwa to end the inning. So two hits, three hits, two left on, no runs across for Ronag. We head to the sixth, Panthers leading 3-1. Welcome back here, top of the sixth inning. Ronag with a 3-1 lead over Keo Ligori starting things off and finds it right down the middle to Nakatani. And Connor Ligori has been everything that Ronak could have asked for today, pitching consistently and only allowing one run over five innings of work this far. That ball in the dirt and that one run unearned mm -hmm. as it was Wakayama who do up next reaching on an error and then advancing to third. A crazy turn of events. Weinstock with a high throw and in there safe is Nakatani. And Weinstock has had a, a rough day in the field. Not yeah. so much fielding the ball, but throwing it over to first as an unfortunate play there transpires for the Panthers. Yeah, he's had a difficult time gauging his throws and many of them have flown over the head of the first baseman. Caparelli. Caparelli doing a good job keeping that one in the field yeah. of play because if he let that one sail over his head, it goes out of uh, out of play and so then up. Nakatani could take second and it, it, it would just not be a, a good chain of events for Ryan Neck as in the batter's box now is Wakayama. And K.O. is to think now, they're in the sixth inning. They have one more at time up at bat after this. They, they know they need to make a dent in this lead now. And it's not even that it's that much of an insurmountable lead. It's only two runs, but they've had their opportunities, they especially have. last inning, second and third with one out and unable to produce any runs. That ball hit very deeply, well over the head of Parker and left, who sends it home, and it'll be second and third yet again, but this time just no out as opposed to one. Another prime position for KO to be in, and that ball was hammered to left center field, almost on the hill out there in left field that we have here at Ryan Neck. And Parker and Tenor knowing immediately off the, off the bat that they would have to go chasing that one down. Parker was the one who picked it up and sent it in. Now we come up with Han, who has the one RBI on the day, ground out from two innings ago. Ligori in another jam, throws a strike in there. No signs of anyone warming up for Reineck in the bullpen. Looks like they'll let him work out of this. That's exactly what Han has, Han, excuse me, Ligori has to do, just focus on the batter. And he's getting hit now as that ball drilled up the middle. Two runs lo looking to score, they'll hold Wakayama at second, but Nakatani comes in to score and it's a one run ball game now. Tying run just 90 feet away. And I think it was a matter of time, Ian, that KO would, would, would get one of these runs across the board as they've been in many positions to do so. So uh, uh, timeout, a uh, little conference on the pitching mound. We'll step aside, it's 3-2, Reineck leading KO. Welcome back here, picking it up in the middle of the top of the sixth inning. 
and an interesting position here. KO with runners on first and third, no out, already one run so far this inning, and looking to potentially tie or even take the lead here. Ian Sachs alongside Ben Green, and Connell Ligori getting a little settling down talking to from coach. Yeah, I think he needed that. He One run just scored, scored and he's been hit pretty hard this inning thus far. See if he can dial it down and, and, and get some outs. That's one way to do it. Sails a strike in there against Tomishima, the first baseman for KO. Ligori deals that one's cut on and fouled off down the third base line. Right off the bat, it looked like, like that one was going to stay fair and could lead to many problems for the Panthers, but nonetheless, uh, ball took a, a Panther roll as it trickled foul. No outs, first and third. That one just missing for Ligori nice as Tomishima now face a 1-2 count, but barely, barely missing the corner was Ligori on that one. As he gets set to deal the 1-2 now from Ligori in the dirt, and going is Han, and that makes sense. You knew it was only a matter of time before Han would take second, because if Sheldon decided to throw down a second, that would have opened up home plate for Wakayama to try to tie this game up at three. The 2-2 two -two is in the dirt, three and two now, and Ligori had an 0-2 count, falls now behind to a full count, three and two. And this is, this is the first real trouble that he's faced, and you have to think there's a lot of things going through his head, and he just wants to get out of this inning with no more damage done. Oh, so close on that one. Just missing, and that was about as close as you can get. I, I, from our vantage point, of course, we're not right on the plate. We're about 100 feet away and thrown over, or thrown off out of play, so not, not exactly the best vantage point, but that one looked like that would have, that was clipping in there, and we have a Substitution checking in for KO. It'll be number eight stepping into the batter's box. Knock it. Maybe there's no sub and manager just wants to speak with the ump, go over something. Well, Fukuda is due up in the lineup now. That's who's due up. We will see. They do not have a number eight on their roster. Excuse me. Yu Yuichi Tanimura will come in to bat for the Kyo Unicorns. No outs, bases loaded in the top of the sixth inning. 3-2, Ryanek leads KO. The stage is set. Tani Mora, 10th grader. That ball is low for a ball. So Ligori in a world of trouble here. Bases loaded, nobody out. Just clipping the corner. Ligori with a, with a beautiful pitch to the knees of Tani Mora. That ball cut on right to Colangelo, who go for the double play, and they get it. This 4-6-3 double play, much needed for the Panthers. What a time to turn their first double play of the day, Ian. Two down now, runner on third. This is a situation that Ligori can work himself out of. Well, now Ligori just needs one out to get out of the inning, but it's a 3-3 ball game, which is 
quite different from a 3-2 ball game or a 3-1 ball is. game as we entered this inning in a 3-1 game. Ligori deals a strike to Oganuki. And KO just kept hacking away, hacking away, and they now are tied 3-3. And KO, maybe even more impressive scoring their three runs than the way that Ronek did. Ronek had the one rally at the first, in the first inning, and really nothing brewing since then. Whereas KO getting the one run in the fourth, and now a rally here in the sixth, and ha has had an, an opportunity, had an opportunity to score a run in the, in the fifth. So KO, really getting to Ligori a lot more than the Panthers hitters getting to the KO pitchers. The one, two, cut on and missed, and that'll do it for that inning, but the damage done nonetheless, two runs for the, two runs for the Unicorns to tie this game up at three. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth right after this. Welcome back to LMC Varsity Sports. Bottom of the sixth. Interesting break here. Tied at 3-3. Keo and Rye Neck. Caparelli digs in and sees a first pitch strike from Fukumoto. Caparelli with an RBI double in the first. Ground out to second in the third. And now here we are in the sixth. Fouled that one off his foot hobbling a little bit as he comes up from that one. And you need to think that both teams have a completely different mindset heading into this inning than any other as the game is now even at 3-3. And KO with all of the momentum, Rynek's three runs came in the bottom of the first. KO's coming more scattered than that in the fourth and sixth. That ball fouled back. KO makes a run for it and it is caught by Kinoshita behind the plate, just continuing the momentum of the Unicorns. As of course, for Rana Kinoshita catching that one just inside the fence as everything seems to be turning towards the Unicorns. Nice play there by the catcher. That ball was hit high in the air and he had to track it and had to land in his mitt. To Mucci now. Settles back on that one as it's in there for a called strike. Fukumoto deals the 0-1. That one cut on and right to Wakayama at short who sends it across the diamond for the put out. Two down. An efficient inning so far for Fukumoto. Just five pitches, two outs. And it'll bring up Christian Cefaloni, the designated hitter for the Panthers. Ball in the dirt for ball one. Cephaloni 0 for 2 today with a ground out to short and a strikeout. The pitch from Fukumoto is low, just missing the strike zone. So it'll be an o, a 2 0 count now. Slow pitch wind up. Low again. So right as I say, Fukumoto doing a good job efficient pitching this inning. Three straight balls from the righty. 3-0, I don't think the green light will be given to the hitter. But I'm not the manager, nor do I want to be. And there, there is the walk. Well, good job not sending the green light there because 
is a ball. So a free pass, a walk as good as a hit in these late game situations. That's what my coach used to tell me, Ian. Ben, don't swing. A walk is as good as a hit. Barker now in the batter's box, the left fielder. Number eight hitter for the Panthers. We'll see a 1-0 pitch. Action in the Rhineck bullpen. Looks like it is number 10. Kevin Tamucci is warming up in the bullpen. We'll see if he comes in in the bottom half, and the top half inning, excuse me, for Ryan Eck. Top half of the seventh when all the marbles will be on the line. The 1-1 one, one cut on and drilled right back to Fukumoto, who sends it over to first. And with that, the Panthers are retired. We head to the seventh, all knotted at three. Welcome back, top of the seventh, all knotted at three. Keo and Rynek, the Unicorns with 9-1-2 due up. Kinoshita sees a pitch just clipping the corner for strike number one. Catcher 0 for 1 today with a strikeout and a sacrifice and cut on that one, fouling it back. New pitcher in the game for the Panthers, Kevin Tamucci, the third baseman switches, and Ligori will move to third. Straight switch, so not too complicated. Tamucci deals, and that one is in the dirt. Low. Bringing the count to one and two. Hey, and you know, pitching change, seventh inning, crunch time, tied ball game. Who knows how long this one's gonna go? I know I'm saying those curse words right there, but Tamuchi gets the strike out there. So, Good outing for Ligori, but he hands it over to the relief pitcher, Tamuchi. A tie game. So a no decision in the works for Ligori. No matter how this game turns out, it will be a no decision as he left with the score tied at three. Tamuchi deals to Oki. That one just missing the out, just missing the outside corner, and it will fall in as a ball. Tamuchi deals in there for a called strike. Evening the count at one. Oki, 0 for three today with a line out, a ground out, and a strikeout in that order. Tamuchi deals in there for a called strike two. And Tamuchi's fresh arm showing some pretty good life. Yeah, and it's a new look for KO2. They've faced Ligori for six innings, coming with a new pitcher, a change of speed and definitely a different de delivery. In the last three innings, really, KO, or two innings, uh, KO really started to hit Ligori hard and got two runs for it. So definitely a, a good decision for Reinach and, and coach Carlucci to get that pitching change and get a different look. Tamuchi set to deal. KO dug out, very vocal with this one. And the payoff pitch is outside, is inside, excuse me, inside. And it'll be a walk for Oki, and it'll bring up Fukumoto, the pitcher for the, or the relief pitcher for the Unicorns now stepping up to help his own cause, trying to push a run across and sneak out of here with a win in regulation. Let's see how aggressive KO is here on the base paths, trying to get a lead going at the bottom. The runner does go. No, he doesn't. He, he goes back. My mistake. I uh, did kind of a halfway run to second, then came back. Thought about it. Definitely thought about it, Oki. But trickled back and he looks very much like a speedster. 
Tamuchi gives a look over and Oki right away dives back for the bag. Tamuchi set to deal. Oki nearly goes. Wouldn't have been the best pitch to go on there. The catcher was up and ready to throw on the high fastball. Sheldon needs to be alert here behind the plate. The throw back from Tamuchi, not in time as Oki back to the bag. One gone here in the seventh inning. A strike and a good pitch from Tamuchi to try to get back in this count a little bit. Now it's 2 1 against Fukumoto. Fukumoto cut on and finds the hole right there, trickles into shallow right field. Coming up with it is Gallagher, and it'll be runners on first and second now, just one away. And the hit and run was successful. The second baseman was going over to cover the bag, and that allowed the ball to trickle through the hole. So I have a conference here on the mound as the Panthers try to figure out how to get out of this jam. We're all nodded at three. Runners on first and second, one out. So uh, an interesting juncture here. And if you're Keo, take a look at this. Yeah, first and second, one out with your number three hitter up and then your number four hitter up. What better of a position to ask for in a tie game, seventh inning? last opportunity to win it in regulation, and it's Nakatani, who's one for three so far today with one run scored. They have to be feeling confident here that the position they've put themselves in, top of the seventh. That ball is in there for a strike, 0-1 oh to the cleanup hitter. Nakatani oh, looking to either be the hero or at least help aid the hero for Keo. And if you're Keo, this is just about as good of a position as you could, could be in in this situation. You finally tie the game and now you're rallying with the top of the order. That ball drilled into left in the center field and no runs will score as a beautiful cannon from Tenor gets it rifled back to Sheldon at the plate to make sure no runs would cross, but now it's bases loaded, one out, and the cleanup hitter due up for the Keo Unicorns. And how important is it to have a center fielder with an arm like that that can hold the runner at third and keep the game tied? And Ben, this is this is just about as dramatic as it can come. Seventh inning, tie ball game, bases loaded, cleanup hitter up. This is it. This is this is this is the game here. Wakayama sees the first pitch sail in for a called strike. The ground ball, the play would be to home plate. Inside, evening the count. Or oh, excuse me, a double play if it's able to be pulled off. Right now, Reinach looking for the easiest, safest play with the bases loaded and just one out. That ball outside, two and one. Tamuchi fighting fire with fire. Not making it easy for himself. Did get the, the first batter, Kinoshita, to strike out. And that ball ripped into left field. Coming under it is Parker. He'll send it home. And no runner will advance. Oki deciding to stay put at third as that ball was hit shallow to Parker. He did a good job coming on, catching it, and rifling it in just in time before anybody could even think about running. Yeah, I think that was the right decision by the KO coaches there, not to send the runner, as it was, like you said, a shallow fly ball, and 
the throw was rifled to the cutoff man. Rifled right to Tamuchi, lining up as the cutoff man. So now that brings up Han. He's driven in two runs today. Just one hit. Was the starting pitcher. Did a decent job except for that first okay. inning where he, he spotted the Panthers three runs. Rifled down the third base line, but foul. And that ball was hit hard there, Ian, but foul. Had that been fair, we could be calling two runs for the Unicorns. Tamuchi delivers. That ball hit Han, and that'll bring in one run for the Unicorns. And uh, not the way that you want to see the go-ahead run come in to score in the seventh inning if I you're think the Panthers. That's the last thing that any coach or player would want to see a go-ahead run score through. A hit by pitch. And the bases are loaded with two outs still, but KO leads 4-3. KO with its first lead of the game. Tomishima. Now up, he takes a called strike. And now- Wow, a huge turn of events here. That ball grounded right back to Tamuchi. He'll send it over to Caparelli, but the damage done as the Unicorns load the bases behind a walk and two singles, and then finally bring home the go-ahead run with, an, with a hit by pitch, Han, getting the taking one for a team. We'll be back right after this for the bottom of the seventh. Last Lakes here at Rynak High School, 4-3. Kia leads the hometown Panthers down to their final three outs and Gallagher leading things off for the Panthers. First pitch in there for a called strike. Coaches on the Panthers not liking that, thinking it was a little low. But nonetheless, that's not how the umpires saw it. Fukumoto gets set to deal the 0-1. And the pitch is cut on and fouled back. And Fukumoto's been accurate and good with his pitches and certainly did what has been asked of him for his relief appearance. Fukumoto's done a good job coming in in relief of Han. The 0-2 from Fukumoto. Gallagher cuts on and fouls it down the third baseline, so we'll do the 0-2 one more time. And uh, let's take you back, Ben, let's go back to the top of this inning. Keo loads the bases and then puts the, the go-ahead run across on a hit-by-pitch. A, a wild way to take the lead in a ball game, but it happened and Reineck needs to find a way to, to bounce that back. Gallagher's hit is well, hit well to center field, but a beautiful grab by Nakatani going back, throwing up his glove and making the catch. First out, so now just two outs separate the Unicorns from their 12th win of the season. And for Ron, I could really be a disappointing one. You hit so well in the first inning and then the bats stopped after that as Sheldon steps in and sees the first pitch in the dirt low. And both of their pitchers did pitch well. Um, they held KO in check for the majority of the game, but to, to lose the lead on a hit by pitch is something that you, you don't want to see on any level of baseball. The 1-0 from Fukumoto in the dirt bounces, bounces before the plate and then pops right back up over the catcher Kinoshita's glove. Of course, didn't matter because no runners on base. Fukumoto gets set to deal the 2-0. And it is 
up high, three and oh. Sheldon, one for two today with a single and a walk. Also flew out his last time up in the fifth. The 3-0 is just down below. So Sheldon draws his second walk of the game and that'll bring up Zach Tenner. And you gotta think Carlucci is gonna wanna send Sheldon here with one down in the bottom of the seventh. It just makes sense to get him in scoring position. Aggressive on the base paths and what are you gonna wait and keep the aggressiveness for? This is last licks here in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch in there for a called strike and Tenor one for three today with a single and two strikeouts. Fukumoto pitch is drilled to center field, caught on by Nakatani, and that'll be the second out of the inning. So now the Panthers down to their final out. Just one more to go. It'll be Chris Colangelo, the three hitter. See if he can keep Ryan Neck's hopes alive. One for two so far today is Colangelo. Singled in the fifth, flew out in the third, and walked in the first. That started their three-run rally. It was a two-out rally for the Panthers, and well, they're two out now. Maybe a little two-out magic with Colangelo up. We'll see if that can happen. He drills that one to left field and is in there with a nice base hit, so making it first and second now. Colangelo moves to two and three, two for three on the day. And that'll bring up Ben Weinstock, the shortstop. And so, two out, Colangelo up, he finds a way to get on base. That's now yeah. the second time today that he does that. Third time today he does that. He gets on base with two outs. So very, very good, uh, good player that you want to have up when there are two out. But nonetheless, he's on base. You don't have to worry about him. It's Weinstock now. That first pitch in the dirt from Fukumoto. Weinstock one for three today with a single, an RBI, a run scored and a fly out and a ground out. The big righty awaits the 1-0 and cuts on it and fouls it back. Making the count even at one now. Two away, two runners on. Bottom of the seventh, 4-3. Kia leads. Fukumoto gets set to deal to Weinstock. And the pitch is cut on and drilled to shortstop. And that'll do it. Wakayama sending it over to Niwa. And that's the end of the game. 4-3. The Panthers fall to the Unicorns. We'll be back with post -game, with the post-game show right after this on LMC Varsity Sports. All right, welcome back here to the LMC post-game show. Ian Sachs alongside Coach Carlucci. And Coach, a, a disappointing loss here today. What lessons can you take away from today's game? Uh, I told them that I was happy with the way they played. I actually took the blame because we sent Peter Gallagher on the bunt, and that was me that sent him, and he got thrown out. Probably would have gotten a couple runs at it had we not done that. So we played, we played hard like we did all year. We battled back. The kids don't quit. I love them. So. And uh, the first inning, you guys really hit the ball well. Got three runs on four hits there. How impressive were you with the way that your team started out today? Well, their pitcher in the beginning of the game had trouble getting his breaking pitch over, so we were sitting fastball and we hit it well. And then after that, they brought in another guy who was getting his breaking pitch over, and that's why we struggled. And now with just about a week or two left in the season, what 
can you look forward to as the playoffs are just right around the corner? Well, we're, we'd like to get as many wins as possible to get the highest seed possible. If we get a couple more wins, we might have a shot at a home game, which we would like. And, and like I said, we've already won nine games. That's five more than last year, but we'd like to tack on a few more. Welcome back here to wrap it up in Sachs and Ben Green. Disappointing loss today for the Ronak Panthers, falling to the Keo Unicorns 4-3. to three. And Ben, Coach Carlucci saying to put the blame on himself for this loss. Not many coaches will do that, but you, you, you have to look at the disappointing way that they faltered at the end of the game. Yes, it's unfortunate to lose a game by hit by pitch, obviously, but a classy move by Coach Carlucci there, you know taking uh, responsibility for the lost and uh, it's something to admire for all coaches nationwide you'd hope. And looking at the, the way that Ronak got the lead they scored three runs on four hits in the first inning and then just four hits over the final six innings after that so the uh, the hitting going cold. Yeah, they started out hot. They had three runs in the first, and I think everyone on their bench was enthused about that. But uh, to go cold for the rest of the game is unacceptable against a team of KO. KO's uh, hitting ability. And now Ronek turning their attention, sitting at 9-8, and eight, looking to make a little push before the playoffs start. Yeah, um, they have a few weeks left in the season, and they can certainly improve their seed with as many wins as possible, like Coach Carlucci said and that's what they're going to go for. All right, so Roddick will look to turn it around. Disappointing one here at the home of the Panthers, falling to the Unicorns, 4-2-3. For Ben Green, I'm Ian Sachs, signing off for LMC Varsity Sports.